Hi, this is Andrew Klein, uh, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to use Final Cut to bring together elements of uh, your demo reel for editing purposes. Uh, what I've done, just to start off, is I've gone to File and uh, chosen New Project. And I already have a new project open here, it's called Untitled Project 3. Uh, in it is a uh, file called Sequence 1. Uh, I'm going to start off and rename this demo reel because this will be my master demo reel sequence that will be down here on the timeline. Uh, here I can bring in all of the clips that I might be using uh, to edit for my uh, reel. So I have my uncompressed raw video that I uh, rendered out of After Effects in the last video. Uh, I also have... Um, let's see here, my uh, cube rotate.movie, the file maybe that I uh, took out of uh, ZBrush or whatever other program you might have used. Maybe this is in-game footage that you have, uh, and uh, I have those sort of uh, set up. So um, bringing this in, my uh, demo reel uh, project setting I'm going to take a look at by right-clicking on and going to settings. And uh, here my, my settings are currently uh, set up for uh, Blu-ray size. Uh, because I'm working on another production right now that's Blu-ray, and that's just what uh, my final cut is defaulting to. Uh, I'm just going to choose NTSC DV, and uh, here you'll see my pixel aspect ratio is defaulting to square. I want to set this at DV, uh, since that's what I'm using. Now my editing time base is also set to 24 frames per second. I want to set this to 29.97. Um, and again, this is because uh, there's another project that I'm working on that is currently 24 frames per second, and it's just defaulting to this. You just want to make sure that you're working in the exact same settings that you took out of After Effects, that you took out of Maya, or that you took out of your other screen recording program. Uh, I will just say OK, and it's going to reconfigure my settings. Now, uh, here I'll be able to bring in my uncompressed raw video. And uh, I'm not going to change my sequence settings to match the clip settings. This should just come in uh, as is. So there's my uh, master clip. And uh, I'm also going to make a new track by right-clicking in my uh, timeline down below, right-clicking and choosing Add Track over on the left-hand side. And I can bring in my Cube Rotate movie. This is the video file that came out of um, ZBrush. Now these files are slightly different sizes. The size of this file is a little bit smaller and actually has been compressed to match this. Uh, I'm going to try and edit these sorts of things and put this all together here in Final Cut. So let me get rid of that cube rotate for right now. The first thing you want to do normally is what I'll do is I'll just sort of like create a quick render of uh, everything in my scene. And that's just uh, sequence render all both. Uh, it's going to ask you to save your project uh, when you do that, and this will then save out to Scratch Discs, and it will write the video. Now I can just hit play, and you'll see this playing right here in Final Cut. Well, there you go. That's awesome so far. Um, what I want to do now is um, I probably don't need it rotating all the way around. So maybe I, maybe I want to start it like right about here and get rid of this first part. Well, one way I could do this is I could take my timeline and just sort of drag it to wherever I'm placing my marker, and that will cause it to start later. And if I want it to uh, end earlier, maybe I want it to end here, in addition to kind of editing it this way, where you drag it into where your timeline is, you can also choose the razor tool, the razor blade tool, and you can click, and then you can even delete off other sections. So now maybe I've actually cut or edited down my clip so it's not as long, which can be really helpful. You'll notice that when it plays back in real time, it's going to play back slightly lower res. Uh, don't be worried about that. When you export out, everything's going to be fine. You'll also notice that I've given a little bit of a buffer here at the beginning and the end of this, and that's just for editing purposes. Now I've got my cube rotate movie. I'm going to drag this one into my timeline. And uh, I'm actually going to overlap it slightly. So I'll put, use this on my track 2, and I'm going to overlap it just slightly here. Now you'll notice, and I'm actually going to make this window bigger just so you guys can see it. You'll notice that uh, these two tracks are kind of like overlapping a bit, and that's just because the size that I rendered out of ZBrush just wasn't big enough. Uh, my document size wasn't big enough. Uh, but that's actually not really the case. My document is actually big enough. It's just compressing... Uh, the size down or shrinking the size down to fit my proportions. Uh, the document that I rendered in ZBrush was really big. It's actually document size or screen resolution size. Uh, and it's actually shrinking it down right now. So I do have extra resolution here to see this. 
Uh, you'll notice that in my um, uh, previewer, my canvas, uh, you can see I actually have my action safe and title safe boundaries on as well. And I can see I've, I still have plenty of room to go to scale this up. Well, I'm just going to double click on this uh, cube rotate movie and go to motion in the viewer. You'll see that right now my scale has actually been shrunk down to 55.9%. That's why it's as small as it is. It's being uh, constrained proportionally to the document. It's not that this is actually smaller. There are more pixels there than we see. I have plenty of room to actually scale this up. And I can choose a size that I feel is appropriate. Uh, you know, maybe about this big where it feels full on the document. And, uh, you know, there we go. So I've got piece one for my reel, piece two for my reel right here. Let's add a little crossfade between the two. So I can do this pretty easily just by uh, right clicking uh, on the little boundary. Actually, first I left click on the boundary for my uh, upper track. Uh, so cube rotate is above my uncompressed raw video. I'll right click and I'll say add transition cross dissolve. You only want your cross dissolve to go as far as the clip that's underneath it. So I'm going to kind of constrain this a bit. Uh, just to this section, so it only cross dissolves in this boundary. And here I'll do another render. Um, your Command R will also render if you're on a Mac, which you will be if you're using Final Cut. By the way, I recommend using Final Cut over Adobe Premiere. It's a much higher quality uh, editing tool. So to uh, any studio, students out there, while Premiere will work, uh, I'm doing this tutorial in uh, Final Cut just because it's a, a much more higher quality program. So now I'm going to hit spacebar to do my playback in Final Cut. Uh, you see I can play straight through. Uh, it's got a little blend between my two models. So this will be model one, this will be model two. Uh, and I've got you know my two different versions that I can see here. Well, let's say I want to create some text. First off, let's create a little bumper at the front and the beginning. I can create text by going into the Effects tab and choosing Text. I can just drag this down to the timeline, kind of place it right in here. Again, I give a little bit of overlap, that way I can uh, fade out. And I'll double click on this text, which in my viewer will just be called sample text. Now here in the controls for this, I'm just going to rename this. Um, in this case, I'm going to call it like sample demo. I'll put my name here. Uh, my name is Andrew Klein. Uh, for a demo reel, I recommend putting your phone number. Uh, I also recommend putting your email address, uh, cube at mouthface.com or whatever your email address might be. Uh, also your website, www.cubeface.com, uh, whatever, whatever it is. You can choose your font. Um, I'm a big, fond, uh, a big fan of Verdana um, for things like this. Uh, I just like the way it looks. Uh, I like Verdana, GeoSans Lite. Uh, the default Lucidia Grande is kind of okay. But again, you can choose whatever you want here. And you can even do uh, you know, custom fonts if you have your own custom fonts loaded, uh, such as I can do my red coat font. But I don't recommend serif fonts or fancy fonts like this. They become hard to read. You want something simple, uh, something that's large enough. Um, sans serif usually works best. Uh, a simple black or single color background or a image placed on the background with not a lot of contrast usually works well. Uh, don't try and make this too fancy. Sometimes gradients cause banding problems. Um, you know, don't uh, try and make too many moving images on your title page. Uh, you know, these sort of things I think would be fine. And of course, you don't even have to include sample demo on yours. I would just kind of put your name. People are going to know that it's a demo reel. You don't really need anything else besides that. Now, what I would do is um, put your timeline kind of over the space where you're seeing your text. And in the control section, I click on the little plus in the origin section. This allows me to actually kind of move around my text by hand. And I can place it pretty much exactly in the middle of the screen. So this becomes a really easy way to just sort of get it exactly where you need it. You could also type numbers and figure out exactly where these things need to go. So if I want to type like negative 5.5 by negative 60, and if I want to be precise with that, I can. So I don't have those decimals, but whatever you need. You can also change your font style and size and all of this. And now, of course, you could also create text in Illustrator or Photoshop and export that out. But um, again, you can do it right here in Final Cut. There's no reason not to.
So I'm going to take this text um, and I'm actually going to copy it and paste it and put it at the end of my movie as well and again give a little bit of overlap. Um, this way I have some ability to crossfade between these elements. Now on my text track, again I'm going to uh, click on the boundary and then right click and choose add transition cross dissolve and here I'll kind of crop that down. I'll do the same thing here at the end with my uh, cube rotate where I'll have that fade out. I'll do a quick render, you'll see how this looks. Start at the beginning, I'll just hit space bar to hit play. Here's my intro text. It'll cross fade into my first model. There it'll be the wireframe. It'll now cross fade into my second model. And then it will fade out. You can also, of course, edit if you want uh, titles before you get to these sections. You can create titles to uh, actually title them. Uh, I'm a big fan of overlaying the title. So I'm going to add another track here. And uh, I'm going to create some more text. Now this text is going to be my overlaid um, description of what's going on here. I'm going to call this, uh, I believe I call this Bop Mouth Box. Uh, give my polygon count, I think it was 432 tries. Uh, my texture count, it's a single um, 512 texture, just like that. Keep your font consistent, so if you're choosing a font like I was using Verdana before, uh, you're going to want to uh, choose a similar font now. Uh, change my text size down, uh, don't need this to be too big, set that to about 16. Uh, I'm going to align it to the left and hit origin and I'm just going to place this like maybe right down here at the bottom of my text safe boundary. And I'll put some crossfades right here. So this uh, fades right to the end. So I click, I right click, say add transition cross dissolve, then I can hover over that boundary and sort of like grab it right to that timeline. So now I have titles for this that kind of pop in and are overlaid. Now you can of course also animate and move all of this around. You can do this in After Effects. Uh, I'm just doing the you know the simplest sort of run through that's needed. Uh, but here I've got you know a text overlay on top of this. You can add another track here. And uh, again, I'm going to bring down some text. right there and uh, cross dissolve into that cross dissolve out of it and I'm gonna call this like high poly cube uh, 800,000 tries or whatever it is should be roughly correct or at least good enough for this demo and uh, also let's try and put this aligned to the left and I'll center it pretty much right here. I'll watch where the cross dissolve is because I want to make sure that I'm uh, putting that pretty much right on top of the other text if I can. So it looks like the text is turning into the next section of text. So that's pretty good. This should now allow me to fade uh, from model to model. There we go. That's pretty much everything I need model-wise. I'll give this one more render by hitting uh, Command R or going to Sequence Render All Render. And then I'll just process my timeline real quick. So once we have this, uh, I can play straight through my timeline. Here's my intro, long enough to read all my text. Um, just want to get back to that. Uh, this is enough time I can say Andrew Klein, read the number read the email, read the website. You can even go a little bit longer if you need to. Here's my text in the bottom corner. Uh, here's my cube rotating. Here's my other cube rotating. Uh, here's my text at the end. There's the fade out. There we go. So you can see I've got um, you know, all of this working I think pretty nicely. There we are. Well, one last step to do, uh, if you have audio, you can now bring this in. 
uh, I'm going to import in uh, some audio files. Uh, I've got this um, audio track, which is kind of goofy. I've also got this music track here. It's an MP3 that I'm using. Uh, let's take this audio track in first. This is actually just video recorded. I recorded of me. It's got a accompanying video track. Um, this is just me making mouth noises. So uh, I can edit some of this. You're not going to be able to hear this in uh, the video because Final Cut doesn't really like um, to have uh, the audio playing while I'm screen recording at the same time. But uh, I can kind of bring that in and if I have my own recorded audio or voiceover or whatever, um, I can lock out the uh, audio channels, delete the video channel, and then I can just sort of like move my audio channels into place. Just like with the video, I can crossfade in and crossfade out, and I'll have audio through that region. That's one way to bring in audio. Uh, I can also uh, import in, if you have like MP3s, you can bring this in as well, uh, and you can sync things up. Now, one of the recommendations I have is don't spend too much time syncing your audio. Most companies will watch these demo reels with the audio or the sound off anyway. Uh, so don't spend too much time trying to get that set up, although it could be good for your own uh, use. Uh, also, just be careful of um, copyright issues is all. This is not your music most likely that you're using, uh, and you probably don't have permission to resell or repackage with it. Uh, for personal use like this, um, it's common practice to have audio on your reel, but um, you know, I would say just be very careful about what you're choosing. I'm going to get my razor blade and cut this at the end. Just give a little uh, nice transition out here. Just making my timeline good enough to see all my stuff. Add a little crossfade here at the end. So it crossfades out. Um, start the audio a little bit delayed. Crossfade in, just like this. Now I've got my audio laid in, and you can nudge it around when you're doing your playback. Uh, and you'll hear all of this. Again, you want to render this out so you can have your audio play. But uh, again, that's pretty much it. So if we look at this uh, and we take a look at the uh, video that's here, all we really need to do now that we've edited this together is we need to be able to send this com to Compressor to uh, save this out correctly. And uh, we need to put this into DVD Studio Pro to burn a DVD if we're going a DVD route. Well, a couple things first. Um, if I have my demo reel uh, settings selected. If you are sending this to the web and you're trying to export this to a website, this is now a really good point to export this to web. Uh, I can go to File, Export, and say using QuickTime Conversion, I can export this out as a movie. I can go to Options, and here I can use several different settings types. Uh, my compression type of H.264 uh, works pretty fine, although H.264 tends to uh, bleach out your colors a little bit. Um, I recommend either H.264, MPEG-4 video, or um, Sorensen 3 if it's available, but it's not a commonly available uh, compression out of Final Cut. So usually what I'd recommend here is H.264, MPEG-4. Here, just set that at best quality uh, keyframe every uh, 30 frames. And there you're good. Uh, make sure it's encoding sound. Make sure it's preparing for fast internet streaming. And as far as size goes, you can use the current settings. Um, set this to custom. Uh, make sure this is uh, 720 by 480. And you can say OK and pretty much export that out for web. Now, if you are uh, not going to web output, if you're trying to burn this to a DVD, what you can do is uh, just take this and choose right click send to compressor. So I click on my demo reel settings and choose send to compressor. And we're going to pick up in compressor in the next video. So stay tuned for that.